Hey guys, DMS here. Today we're going to talk about my experience with the Apple M1. I bought one as soon as it came out. I've been using it a lot alongside my PC and I've got a few things to say about it. So let's check it out. Okay, I've got it here on my desk. I am running it into my capture card on my computer so you guys can see what I've got going on. There's a few things that I have really enjoyed about it, a few things that I really don't feel like have changed that much and some areas where I feel like I should compare it to the big machine. There is basically no wake up time. You open the computer and the screen is on before it's all the way open. It is near instantaneous. Being able to use the fingerprint sensor is nice. Um, this is not a new thing though for Apple computers. The extreme responsiveness certainly is. This is, here let me go into my configurations about this Mac. This is the 13 inch MacBook Pro with 16 gigs of RAM and I got this with a terabyte of internal storage. So somewhere in the ballpark of a $2,000 computer. Before I talk about programs and things like that, because I use this with Blender, After Effects, Premiere Pro, Final Cut, uh, DaVinci Resolve, all kinds of things, Logic Pro, I wanna talk about the battery life because that is what's the most insane upgrade in this computer over every other Mac I've had and every other PC I've had. I think it's worth noting, I am a PC user primarily. I use my PC for the bulk of my video editing work at the office, at home, I use it for gaming, I use it for all kinds of other things. But this computer has had an essential role in my production lately. The battery life, like I said, is out of this world. I have not charged it sometimes for several days at a time while using it for uh, working on small video projects or managing files on the file server or sculpting things in Blender, preparing them for renders. The battery just lasts an insane amount of time and very rarely do I actually concern myself with the idea of having to plug it in unless I'm just using it at a desk and don't need to run battery anyway. The nice thing is that performance doesn't seem to really change between wired and wireless on this computer. If you're using it plugged in, the performance is pretty much the same as if you're using it on a battery. Uh, I'm using it on battery right now. So let's start at the top with Premiere Pro because that is one of the most frequent programs I use. Uh, there's a bunch of sound files that are gonna be offline because I store these on a media server and I don't have that all connected right now. But all the video files are here, uh, all this 4K footage, multiple layers of that, audio off of my Zoom recorder. And uh, let's play through some of this. One, and it is all of the headphones that I've recently reviewed in a big list ranked on sound quality. By the way, that list will be linked in the video description if you guys want to check it out. Exactly what you guys have been asking for. So make sure you're subscribed, check that out. Let's get into the video. The timeline performance of this is fantastic. I can't even begin to describe how many times I have had laggy problems with timeline performance on a lot of older computers. Uh, even sometimes on my big desktop, I have trouble with timeline performance. And I would say that these two go hand in hand with Premiere timeline performance. So scrubbing, cutting, things like that. This desktop is running a 3950X processor with a 5700XT GPU. The M1 is just a little M1. Uh, now I will say rendering wise, the desktop blows it out of the water. The desktop is much faster for rendering, but when it comes to timeline performance, they're pretty much the same. There is, however, an area where the M1 seems to almost always pull ahead in performance, and that is if I use something like Warp Stabilizer. So let's go back to this little clip right here. And a lot of their tech feature. I'm gonna put Warp Stabilizer on that really quick, and this is gonna stabilize real fast. It is just, a breeze. It happens so quickly every single time, and I think that's because of the single threaded performance on the M1. Warp stabilizer is primarily a single threaded task, so things like that, if I want to quickly stabilize footage, a lot of their tech features, it happens so fast. Now this wasn't a shaky clip, so it didn't take long anyway, but either way, no matter what the clip is, if you use warp stabilizer, you know it takes an just absolutely monstrous amount of time usually to work. With that being the case, it's very nice how quickly Warp Stabilizer works in Premiere. And now while rendering might not be the fastest on the M1 compared to my desktop, it is very reliable. I don't have renders fail 
on the M1. And that's actually an area where I've used this computer a lot. Every time my desktop, uh, either here or at work, hasn't worked properly, I'll just finish the edit on an M1 and it gets the job done. Uh, actually, for several weeks, we got in a different computer at work because I couldn't complete any renders or any edits on my work computer. The GPU was having trouble. I just brought in the M1 and every single one of those projects was edited on this laptop. Uh, that would have been over on the Abyss channel. And all of that is four streams of 4K 60 FPS footage that's all 10-bit. And that's pretty hard to edit footage. It's a non-optimized codec. And this laptop was able to handle all of that footage. Four streams of 4K 60 footage off of GH5s. And while the render times, like I said, were not as fast, uh, it is a machine that I could count on to complete the render. I just started it and I knew it would finish. And that is nice. Uh, I did try a lot with Final Cut Pro. I didn't like it quite as much, specifically because of a couple features. One, I miss the ability to include adjustment layers. And two, not having access to the master audio output bus is kind of a pain. So if I reopen this project here real quick, let's go back into this. Having access to these audio buses and being able to put things in here makes a really big difference in my workflow. And being able to just bulk color grade and put adjustment layers on clips is very, very useful. I know there's additions that allow you to do that in Final Cut Pro, but I just find this to be a bit more useful. And especially if you're wanting to do something like this, where you take, uh, here, let's go back in the editing timeline over here. Let's say I want to take a few clips and put this here, this here, and this here. We have three separate cameras, and in Final Cut you can synchronize them and make it into a multicam clip, but if I want in Premiere I can just click synchronize right here and sync all of them up in the timeline, which is really nice, and it's pretty much always spot on. Uh, because of those features, I find it easier to work in Premiere for multicam projects, but your experience may vary. Once Final Cut's rendered optimized media, I found the performance is basically the same. But if you haven't yet optimized media in Final Cut, which you have to just basically ingest all your footage and sit there and wait for it to go and re-encode all the footage as a uh, an optimized media like ProRes. If you don't let it do that, I found that Premiere actually performed better, which is interesting because Final Cut is optimized for M1, whereas Premiere Pro has not yet been optimized for M1. So that makes me very optimistic about Premiere's performance as it becomes optimized for this platform. Uh, DaVinci Resolve wasn't quite as stable as the other two, which I know that sounds crazy, but Premiere is actually a very stable program on the M1. Uh, DaVinci Resolve, though, performed very well. I didn't have any trouble with it at all. After Effects here is one that really stood out. After Effects, I actually get better timeline performance on this computer than I do on my Windows machine. And I'm going to open up a project in After Effects. This is my logo. And if I play this back on here, it is buttery, buttery smooth, the exact same way it was on my PC. It's very easy to go through and select things. They'll load up like this. I can edit stuff very, very easily. Really no problems at all. After Effects has been great. Uh, render times for After Effects are a little bit longer depending on the type of codecs I use, but for the most part, After Effects performs very, very, very smoothly. Uh, when it comes to things like drawing uh, and masking and stuff like that, I find that it's much faster to draw and create masks on this computer than it is on my actual desktop. However, if I am rendering things that say have motion blur, the desktop does outpace it. So it kind of comes down to what you need more. Do you need faster rendering time or do you need the ability to edit things a little bit easier in the actual program? I close After Effects and let's open up Blender. Got Cinema 4D down here too, but I feel like Blender is a little bit more typical. And uh, let's open up. Blender is another similar case where the actual performance of playback is buttery smooth, no frames dropped. Even if I, you know what, here, let's go into the fully rendered version. I'm missing this plane in the back, so let's turn that off. You know what, let's make sure we have the background in here. Okay, now I am rendering this live in Eevee. I have reflections happening all over the world on this logo and it's playing back just fine. There is not a single dropped frame happening here. And this is the exact same performance I would expect from a decent desktop computer. In rendering at 4K, this completes this current project at a frame every couple of seconds, whereas uh, my desktop completes a frame about every 0.7 of a second. So the desktop is a little bit over twice as fast for rendering, likely because it has a big beefy 200 watt GPU. But for something that I can start a render and then take with me as it's rendering, that's incredible. But once again, um, I don't have this computer for 
the render times. It's mostly for the actual performance in Blender when I'm modeling something or the performance when I'm working in a timeline. This is the performance that I feel like matters for the vast majority of cases. Sure, a long render time sucks, but it's a lot more frustrating when you have to edit something and it just sits there and chugs while you're you know, doing tasks and connecting nodes and whatnot. And being able to edit something very smoothly, have the whole editing process be buttery as you're doing it, is a lot more favorable for me than shaving minutes off of a render time. And a lot of times what I'll do is I will have edited a project on here on the M1 and then we'll transfer it over to my desktop and offload the rendering workload there so that while that's rendering, I can work on other things here on the M1. Same goes for Logic Pro. Uh, in Logic Pro, there have been so many projects where it is extremely easy to just load in lots of samples and things like this. Like this would have absolutely chugged down my iMac. All kinds of just, and this isn't a huge project, but there's enough samples in here that are all playing together that this would have just made my iMac cry and I can still scroll super smooth, I can open up all kinds of things, and it will just never stop being extremely smooth. Is it the perfect computer though? No. There have been some compatibility issues. A lot of things that I like to use in Logic, so things like um, Native Instruments Massive, are not yet supported for not only the M1, but for Big Sur, the operating system. That's a pain. Things like Telegram, if I open them, it always opens the iPhone version. There is a desktop version of Telegram for Mac OS, but it always opens and downloads the iPhone version. I can't seem to get it to actually download or open the desktop version, so I lose access to uh, a, a layout that I think is a little bit more suited for large screens. It is nice, the ability to download iPhone apps, but I'm sure that you've seen in other reviews of the M1 that um, the layouts are not really well suited for desktop use, but it is what it is. It's hard to complain too much there. Tidal has performed really well on it. Uh, I've not had trouble with any DAX, any amps, anything like that. One specifically odd thing is every time I quit Tidal, I will get a message saying that Tidal quit unexpectedly. And it's always on a delay. There we go, it just popped up. Every time I quit Tidal on the M1, I get this message like maybe four seconds after I close the program. I can just chalk that up to it being new software, I suppose, or it's newly been ported, or maybe it's a Rosetta thing. Maybe it's not supported on the M1 yet. Not sure, either way. Kind of weird, but not a deal breaker. So what do I think about people buying the M1? I think it is a great computer, but unless you want to be an early adopter of something, you probably want to wait it out. There's already been rumors of an M1X of a 32 core chip, an Apple chip coming late next year. That is the clear choice for professional use over what they're currently putting out. However, um, I, I heard this in a Dave 2D video, and I think that it is really good advice. If you want to do creative work, if you want to do something, if you want to edit something, don't wait for the good computer to come out, just start doing it. If you want to edit videos, if you want to work on music, go on and get a computer. In fact, uh, I will say the Mac Mini M1 is an insane deal right now in computing. It is hard to build a good video editing PC for $700, and that thing does it. I would argue that the uh, Mac Mini M1 is a significantly better value than this computer or many others on the market, if not everything else on the market for creative work. The MacBook Pro is great if you need battery life, and let's be honest, waiting an entire year for a little bit more performance, you're probably better off just using that year to make content and start putting things out there. Yeah, upgrade down the road if you need it, but if this gets the job done, it gets the job done. I, for one, am very happy with it, and several times I considered replacing my desktop altogether if it weren't for the fact that I love this case and I still use it for gaming sometimes. Mac OS and Windows, that's kind of a preference thing. I find that Mac OS is really stable, which is nice. I'm not a fan of a lot of the problems that I tend to have in Windows as it develops on, but of course you do have access to faster, beefier hardware in a lot of cases with Windows, so ups and downs, depends on what you want. My Windows machine is still my powerhouse, but a lot of times if I want to get something done fast, I'll do it on the M1. Plus, sometimes it's just nice to sit and work on my couch instead of at my desk. I spend a lot of time at this desk. Okay, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. This is a little bit different from my normal types of videos, uh, but that is going to be that. If you want to know how I feel about this computer later on, maybe I'll recover it in um, a few months of ownership of the M1, because as it is now, I've had it for probably, uh, I'd, when it came out, 
a few months ago, so a month and a half, two months, something in that ballpark, I think. Anyway, that's going to conclude today's video. If you like this video, guys, please leave a like down below and a comment. Let me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can at forum.hifiguides.com. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until the next one, guys. Peace.